Hello everyone, welcome back to another Calamity video, and in this video I want to defeat the Aquatic Scourge and maybe attempt to defeat some of the mech bosses as well. Right now I don't actually do enough damage to defeat any of the mech bosses, so I will have to upgrade my weapons and probably my armor if I do want to give them a shot. So yeah, let's get right into the video. So the first thing I want to do in this video is upgrade this Daedalus armor to Titan Heart armor. Now I do already have 12 Titan Hearts, and if I go over to the dungeon, you can see that there is a new biome here. I'm assuming this spawned in during hard mode. There are little alien enemies that spawn around here, and if I kill them, sometimes they will drop Titan Hearts and also Stardust. Stardust isn't that useful, but Titan Hearts can be used to upgrade my armor. Now if I go to the recipe browser, you can see the Titan Heart armor requires Titan Hearts and also some of this Astral Monolith. Now the Astral Monolith is actually this block right here. If I mine this up, which I can actually do with my Adamantite pickaxe, I can get some and then craft the armor. So let's do that. Okay, so I did mine some of the Astral Monolith, and I can craft the armor. Now there's actually only one variant of the armor, and it is a rogue set, so that's why I'm going for it. It does have slightly more defense than the armor right now, but I think it does do more damage overall. So let's actually test this out and see. This has 45 defense, and if I go back... 43, so barely an upgrade in defense, but hopefully there'll be an upgrade in damage. So what's this give? Looks like every piece does give a boost to rogue damage, or at least boost to rogue stats in general. Okay, so the set bonus actually 20% increased rogue damage, and that's pretty good. I think that's more than this set gives in total, which is great. Okay, so the twins are actually about to naturally spawn. So I do want to give them a shot and see if the Titan Heart armor will give me any, you know, benefits that... Oh wow, what was that? Not that the Daedalus armor doesn't have. I did actually fight the twins before. I was not able to survive. I got them to a little bit past the second phase, and then they killed me. So we'll see how this goes. Alright, so we're actually still at full health. We're about to get Adrenaline again. This is going very well. Alright, both of them are now in their second form. If I could get Rage, that would be nice. Actually, Rage is filling up very slowly. It actually doesn't appear to be that difficult at the moment. Oh shoot, we only have two minutes left before it's daytime. It doesn't only have 10,000 health. And I almost have adrenaline. Alright, I used it, but he was pretty far away. Couldn't really hit, hit that many shots on him. Alright, come on. It's almost daytime. And I'm, the twins do despawn in the day. This is actually more intense of a fight than a... Uh, I previously anticipated, mostly just because of my damage output. I need to focus more on damage and less about surviving. I only have a minute and a half. Well, I mean, a minute and a half for 3000 HP shouldn't be too difficult, and I'm actually kind of low. This isn't good. This isn't good at all. Maybe? 
2,000 HP. Come on. This is going to be a very close fight. Maybe less close than I'm thinking, but uh, I am kind of low. I could easily be one-shotted at my current HP levels. Alright, come on. 200 HP. Yes, let's go. I really did not think I was going to win that. I almost considered not recording it, too. Whew, I'm so happy. Hey, it says Retnazer is no longer after you. Was she still alive? I just kind of assumed that I killed her, but I guess not. I don't know, but let's go through our items. Alright, so let's actually go over some of the loot that I got. Um, I did clear out some of my inventory already, so that it's a little less crowded. But, the twins. The biomechanical watchers of the night originally created as security using the souls extracted from human eyes. That's terrifying. These creatures did not belong in this world, it's best to get rid of them. I got you on that one. Grab this item to gain invisibility and rogue bonuses at night. I don't really want to be invisible, but the rogue bonuses at night I will take. However, your defense is reduced while above 50% life due to you feeling softer. Well, since it's above 50% life, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. And my max acceleration is reduced while below 50% life due to you feeling heavier. Now the acceleration... Acceleration being reduced while below 50% life, that could be troublesome for boss fights. Because movement is a must while you're fighting a boss. I'll have to see what the bonuses for rogue weapons actually are. I'll have to look that up. Because if it's not that good, then I think the downsides are too heavy for me to actually use this. The mechanical bosses. I see you have awakened Drayden's old toys. I don't remember who Drayden is. I think he was like... Was he the Archmage by any chance? No, he was Permafrost. Once useful tools turned into Savage Beast when their AIs went rogue. A mistake that Drayden fails to rectify in time. Okay. That's, this doesn't really do anything, it's just a little bit of lore. Let's actually open the treasure bag. 31 souls of sight. Nice. Harvester parts, useless for me now. Mechanical wheel piece. I need all three of those to actually make the cart. And 35 hollowed bars. I'm pretty sure that's more hollowed bars than usual. I'm not sure. So no new weapons, but I'm sure we can make some stuff of these hollowed bars. Okay, so I was looking at all the stuff that I can craft with hollowed bars. And there are a couple things that piqued my interest. First of all, there is this Stormfront Razor, which is a direct upgrade to the throwing knives that I don't know how to pronounce. And it only requires 6 hollowed bars, 4 essence of sunlight, I have a bunch of that, and 8 feathers, which are easy, I have a bunch of that as well, so I could craft that right now. Uh, there's also the Pwned Hammer, which is crafted with the Pawn Hammer, the 7 hollowed bars, and all the souls. This does 538 rogue damage, which is insane, but I can also not craft that right now just because of all the souls. There are also a couple of other weapons. Let's see if I can actually find them. There is this weapon right here, 205 rogue damage. It's a Drayden weapon or whatever you call them. I don't remember. I think these weapons are supposed to be created by Drayden. Anyway, all I need are these two things, which I have. Some of the souls of sight and 10 hollowed bars, which I also have. So I might create that if I have enough uh, stuff remaining. So yeah, I think I want to craft this Stormfront Razor first and see how well it actually does in a fight. Okay everyone, so I'm ready to defeat the Aquatic Scourge. I have a couple buffs from Calamity that I did not use for the twins, just because I'm now more prepared. I also did find this Darkness Potion, which fills my Rage Meter up completely, which is really good because that'll allow me to do a ton of damage. Um, I'm also using the Cryogen Lore Items Dash instead of the Counter Scarf. You probably noticed that when um, I was fighting the Twins. And I just did that to save an accessory slot, which I think was a good choice. Um, yeah, I don't think there's really anything else to say. Let's buff up. Use my summons. How many do I have? Three, three summons. That's actually kind of a lot for a non-summon character. And yeah, let's get started. Let's see, where is he? I don't see him anywhere. Hello, Aquatic Scourge. Let me open the map, where is he? Huh. I don't think he actually spawned. Alright, well I'll have to get another spawning item, so I'll see you then. Okay, so I now have another summoning item, so let's hope it actually works this time. Boom, okay, so I can see him on the map. Um, I do hope this Rage Potion actually helps out a lot. 
I think it's technically, yeah, it's a darkness potion, but it gives the rage effect. Alright, yeah, that's a ton of damage. I really don't think the Aquatic Scourge is that difficult. Just kind of a giant worm that flies through the air. The real danger is in these landmines and little spikes that he throws out of his body. That's the actual danger part. He never actually does any contact damage, really. Also, the fact that you can pierce through him and hit multiple segments makes this fight a lot better. I don't really want to be right here. Just gonna discord out of there. We've barely actually taken any damage so far. Of course, I say that as I get dive bombed on, but... You know, the point still stands a little bit. I don't like this. Right, I want to play this a little carefully. Because I'm actually feeling his damage a little more than I was before. His minefields are crazy. I want to stay out of that area over there. I think I could just go anywhere inside the Sulfuric Sea without him being enraged. I don't know if he gets enraged outside of it, but I'm guessing he does. It's not uncommon for bosses to be enraged outside of their respective biome. Right, maybe if I actually move a little less, it'll make this fight easier. So if I just kind of stand on the water, I don't think he'll hit me that much. Of course, I do still have to dodge him, but I think it makes the spikes easier to dodge. Alright, hopefully my heals will actually uh, not be on cooldown soon, because I'm going to need a heal. I ran right to that landmine that did a lot of damage. Yes, let's go. Okay. Let's actually check out the loot now. Alright, so it looks like there's nothing else outside of the treasure bag, so let's open that up. And Wow, there's actually a lot of stuff in there. Alright, so we got some starfish and stuff like that. Any rogue weapons? There's the Scourge of the Sea. I don't know if this is good. I'll have to test it out. Um, I need to delete something. We'll just toss those away for now. Warding Aquatic Emblem. Most ocean enemies become friendly and provide water breathing. Being underwater slowly boosts your defense over time, but also slows movement speed. The defense boost and movement speed reduction slowly vanishes while outside of water. Maximum defense boost is 30, maximum movement speed reduction is 5%. That's barely any movement speed reduction. Provides small amount of light in the abyss. Moderately reduces breath loss in the abyss. That's okay, I don't think I'm going to really use that. There's this angling kit, right click to open. I'm not going to open that right now because of full inventory. There's this vanity item. I don't really know what this is. Let's see what else. That might just be pretty much all. I mean, I could test out these weapons. This is actually a pretty good magic weapon. What about this bow? Pretty cool, pretty cool. I got a lot of victory shards as well. So, off camera, I made a money farm, and it's actually very effective. Basically, all it is is a jungle biome, and the entire ocean floor is covered in jungle grass. As you can see, there are a lot of fish down there wanting to eat me. And, um, basically, I have this broken slime staff. It has to be broken because you don't want to do that much damage. And I also have this little greedy ring. And basically what this ring does is it has a chance to give you coins whenever you hit an enemy. So what you do is you stand in this water and a bunch of anglerfish and um, these weird longfish spawn. And you can have your slime staff out. And it does actually give you money. Now the slime sometimes falls off the platform. As you can see it did it almost instantly there. But when it doesn't, it gives you a lot of money. As you can see, if I go into my piggy bank, I have 376 platinum coins and some gold. So yeah, I'm doing pretty well. Um, this is a design that I took from Happy Days, the YouTuber. He's pretty well known. I'll leave a link to the video in the description down below if you want to build this farm. So yeah, let's move on to defeating the Destroyer. Okay, so as I said in the last clip, I do want to defeat the Destroyer. And how I'm planning on doing that is using this Scourge of the Seas. As you can see, whenever I throw it, it summons a little cloud of red, I don't know, I think it's poison. And that's actually very powerful and it does pierce through worm enemies. 
so it should do really well against the destroyer i'm not even gonna use potions because destroyer only has 80,000 health which is nothing compared to the aquatic scourge so yeah let's get right into it all right the destroyer's coming in oh i think he has he has a bit more than 80,000 health he has 150,000 still less than the aquatic scourge but uh still a decent amount more than i thought also summoning a lot more probes than I would have wanted. Well, I don't think this fight is going well, is it? Yeah, this is not this is not gonna work out. There's so many probes. This is not a normal amount of probes. I think every single segment you destroy gives has a probe. I don't know, maybe this weapon's better. This also isn't really doing any damage. Destroyer must have a lot of defense, that's probably what it is. I don't know, if I can destroy all these probes, then maybe it'll take more damage. Alright, well that was... That wasn't great. I really was confident on that. I thought I was going to do a lot more damage, and I was doing a lot of damage, it's just I didn't expect thousands of probes. Like in Fidelo Terraria, there's only like 10 probes at most. But, um, alright. I think I know what I could do. Alright, so I think I'm ready for the Destroyer fight. I got a bunch of buffs from Calamity, as always, on difficult boss fights. And I also have the Nimbus Rod this time. I also exchanged some of my accessories for more damaging and protecting accessories, so I think I'm ready. I'm just going to quick buff. Let's use the mechanical worm. Place down the two Nimbus clouds. And let's go. Oh, the Nimbus clouds were actually a bit below the destroyer. Oh yeah, also I used the potion of darkness. So I have rage now. So I have a full rage meter, which can do a ton of damage. Uh, too bad most of my rage was used up on these probes. Whatever, I'm doing a lot better. It's actually a very laggy fight because all the probes and lasers. I might use this weapon here. I don't know, it just seems kind of better. Eh, maybe not. I don't know, they're very close in DPS. Oh, he's shooting different colored lasers. a very different fight from vanilla that's for sure usually i'd be sitting in a box in the sky but i just don't think that's how you do it in calamity i don't know if these lasers cause different effects or anything i haven't really gotten hit by any of the non-red lasers i'm gonna replace my nimbus clouds just in case place them up higher too because they're a bit too low because if the destroyer is swimming in these blocks, these um, platforms, then he's not going to be hitting the previous Nimbus clouds, but now he is. Alright, yeah, I definitely think this weapon's really good for the destroyer because of its piercing ability. Really, I didn't have to change anything, I just had to get better potions and a couple extra weapons and accessories, and I was good. The Rata Discord is a very good weapon to have. It's not even a weapon, it's a utility for this fight. Because if he does wrap around you, you could just teleport out. Alright, it does look like we're going to win. I don't even think we lost very much health at all during this whole fight. Unless he does something insane, then we have this in the bag. What oh, a sound of metallic clinking. That goes along with the destroyer is disgusting. Oh my gosh, the contact damage hurts for the destroyer very badly. Let me just go over here. Alright, 2000 health. Where is he? Come on, let's go. There we go. I knew we could do it this time. Alright, well, first of all, let's heal up, get the treasure bag, and the war should be up here. Yes, it is. Alright, let's look at the loot. Alright, so let's check out the loot. First of all, I'm going to read the Destroyer lore item. 
a machine brought to life by the mightiest souls of warriors and built to excavate massive tunnels in planets to gather resources. I mean, that kind of makes sense. Could have proven useful if Drayden didn't have an obsession with turning everything into a tool of destruction. I think Drayden's actually an enemy or a bad guy in Calamity. Before, I kind of thought he was more of a... I don't know, like a scientist. He didn't really have a side. He was just doing research, but I think he's a bad guy. Favor this item to gain a boost to your pick speed. Right, so that's just mining. I don't really need a boost to mining speed. However, your max acceleration is decreased slightly due to you feeling heavier. Yeah, this isn't very useful to me because I don't really have to mine that much, and I'm a very fast miner because of all my accessories and potions and stuff like that. I don't really need it. Let's look at the treasure bag. Oh wow, there's pretty much nothing in here. Just hollowed bars, mechanical wagon piece, and the souls of might. Alright, well I hope there's something I can actually make with the souls of might that's useful to me. Um, I'll have to do some research into that. So I did actually get this Cosmolite item. It does change it to night and day, as you can see. And it's a very simple crafting recipe. All you need is the Moonlight, which is 7 souls a night and 5 frigid bars. And also the Sunlight, or the Daylight, which is crafted with 7 souls of light and 5 hellstone bars. So it's very simple and a very useful item. I definitely re recommend you getting it if you play Calamity. Alright, well I couldn't find anything useful for the Souls of Might, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next Calamity video. Bye everyone!